Hi guys, in this beginner modeling tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can model a simple vase in Blender. So, let's get straight into it. I'm going to be using the curve modeling technique to model the vase, but um, you can also use the method of uh, building it up by mesh. So let me just quickly show you how to do it if you want to model it by hand. So uh, let's just quickly go ahead and hide the light and the camera because we don't need it for this tutorial. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and select the cube and just delete it. And what we want to do is we want to add in a circle. So go Shift A, Mesh, uh, Add Circle. Okay, and then we want to fill the circle up. So over here you'll see something called Add Circle. Go ahead and expand the arrow over there. And then for the fill type, change it from Nothing to End Gone. Okay, and that's about it. Now tab into Edit Mode. Okay, once you've done that, go ahead and then uh, in the front view, so hit number one on your numpad, uh, go ahead and hit E and then extrude upwards like so. Then scale it out. Uh, you can scale it out as much as you want to. Then extrude once more. Maybe this time we'll scale it in. Extrude once more. You might scale it out a little bit more. I uh, might increase it, the height maybe. And then extrude once more. Scale it in a bit more. Uh, oops. All you just need to do is just keep extruding and scale it in, scale it out, any way you like. So once you're done with that, go ahead and delete the top face by hitting X, delete face. Okay, then tab out of edit mode and then go to the modifiers tab in the properties window. Then go ahead and add modifier and select the subdivision surface. So straight away you can see that it's trying to smooth everything out. And it's starting to look more like a vase. So if I uh, uh, increase the number of views over here, you can see that the subdivision increases and we get a, a lot more uh, smoothness in our model. So we've created a very simple vase by using uh, like a very simple way of modeling by hand. Of course, these parts look a little bit weird and stretched. So in order to fix that, we have to go to face select mode, select that face, delete that face, and then go to say vertex select mode, alt right click that loop, E to extrude and then scale it in, E to extrude again and then scale it in, and then we fill it up over there so that we get rid of those weird line artifacts. Okay. So that is a very simple way to model a vase in Blender. However, the curve modeling technique is probably an even better way to model vases in Blender. So let's go ahead and hide this one over here. We don't need to see that. Let's start by modeling a simple curve that we want to spin our vase around. So let me just show you what I mean. Go ahead and hit Shift A, then Curve, then select Bezier. So we have a very simple Bezier curve over here. Um, then what we want to do is we want to tab into edit mode and then you'll see that we have different controls It's not like vertexes and edges and and faces. It's just control points for curves So what we want to do is we want to select all the curves by hitting a I mean sorry all the control points by hitting a and then go R Y 90 and Then minus just to change the direction what this does is it will rotate our curve on the Y axis 90 degrees so that it stands upright then what we want to do is we want to move it around about here. So keep in mind that the center point of the curve, this little orange dot, is over here. So we want to be able to keep that in mind when we do curve modeling. Okay, now we can go ahead and have some freedom in how we want to rotate. So over here I might just rotate uh, on the Z axis as well, R, Z, 90. So we have something that looks like that. Okay, so I might move this one uh, towards the ground over here. I might move this one uh, a little bit higher over there and then create something like that. If you want to create more points, just hit E to extrude and then you can create something that, uh, you know, you can create more and more interesting shapes. So this will be sort of like the side view of your vase. Maybe I want to have this side come out a bit more. So we might have something that looks like that. You're free, of course, to choose any kind of uh, style that you like. You just have to select these control points and tweak them. Uh, however you like. Just right click to select and then hit G to move them around to create interesting looking shapes. So once you have the side profile of how you want your vase to look, all you need to do is go to add modifier and then select the screw modifier. So straight away we can see we've very easily and quickly created a vase in a Blender. And the, and the powerful thing about using a curve modifier compared to modeling it by hand is that you can play around and adjust it even after you've added the modifier. Since modifiers are non-destructive, we can do anything that we like and just keep tweaking it to 
make it look the way that we want. So maybe I want to add some new points, maybe something like that, make it look more like a trophy. I, I don't know, just, it's really up to you. Okay, so maybe I might say that that's the kind of vase that I want to go for. So once that's done, um, to make the vase look more like a proper vase, uh, right now it has no thickness. So we might go ahead and add another modifier and add a solidify modifier. The solidify modifier will make your vase thicker. So we can maybe add a little bit of thickness like that. And just to smooth everything out, we can go ahead and add another modifier, the subdivision surface. But this time we don't have to crank this number up so much. Uh, when you crank this value up so much, it tends to slow down Blender a little bit because it's, going, it's adding in so much vertex data just to smooth things out. So this time we can get away with using much less vertices, which is another reason why the curve modifier is better. It's a lot more efficient on your memory and CPU power. Okay, so how does the screw modifier work? Well, it's quite simple really. It takes your curve, the one that you have over here, so if I just hide this for a second, it takes this curve over here, and the screw modifier literally spins you, the curve around this center point over here. So as you can see, when we spin this around, we get something that looks like this. So if you find that when you put the screw modifier and it tends to look awkward, something like that, or something like that, and, you, and you're not able to understand why it's doing that, it's because the axis that it's spinning on is on the wrong axis. So in this instant, it's spinning on the Y axis. The Y axis is this green line over here. So it's attempting to spin this uh, curve around on the Y axis and you get something that looks like that. If I choose the X axis, uh, it will use this as the axis to spin around on. So we'll take this curve and spin it around on this axis. So this can also be a quite an interesting shape as well. Good for maybe creating like a wheel cap or something. If you change it to the Z axis, it spins it on the Z axis over here, the blue line. So that's why um, when I modeled it, I kept that in mind uh, when doing the modeling. So that's why I'm able to get this shape right off the bat. Okay, so that's pretty much the basics of creating a curve modifier. So if I go Shift D, I can create another variation over here. I can create another style of vase. There's something that looks like this, more like a honeypot. Uh, that's one style. Maybe I can create another style. You can see very, very easily. It's only taking me a few seconds to modify the complete shape of the vase. Maybe I can make this one um, quite wide. This one, like that maybe. Okay, so once you're happy with everything, it's now time to start making this an actual mesh so that you can do stuff with it like, you know, animating it or even adding textures to it. You probably wouldn't need to animate it, but you need to add textures to it. So the, with the current state, it's not very easy to actually add textures to a curve, although it can be done. But it's be probably better to add textures to an actual mesh. In other words, a, a mesh that has uh, vertices, edges and faces. So right now if I go into edit mode, you'll see that we don't have any edges, vertices or faces. So we need to convert this into an actual mesh. So even if I go ahead and apply these modifiers, you'll see that I can't do it because it needs to be transformed into a mesh. So in order to do that, go ahead and hit F3. That'll open the, the search bar of Blender and simply say convert to, or just type the word convert, and then convert to mesh from a curve. So if I go click that, it's now a mesh. Okay, so we'll do the same with this one. Uh, F3, convert to mesh. Do the same thing with this one as well. F3, convert to mesh. And there we go. We have the final model of our vase done. Oh, we don't have this bottom part filled up, but I think that that part is relatively simple to do. If you want to fill it up, just go X, delete vertices, and then just uh, right click all of this one, and then hit E, extrude in, E, extrude in once more, and then just fill that. Do the same for this side as well. Right click this part over here, E, extrude in, E, extrude in, and just fill it up. Okay, so that will fill up your vase. So uh, anyways, that is the basics of how to model a vase. So that's how you quickly and easily model simple vases in Blender 2.8. I hope this video has been useful and please like, share and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. Thanks for watching.